recently there was this video on CNN, which just goes to show you the the rhetoric and the propaganda is very strong with the mainstream media, and it's why most people shouldn't even be watching mainstream media, because this is a sort of information that you get. So we have here uh, Avalon on, on people who refuse to get the jab and it says there's no cure for stupidity. The good news is that over 237 million vaccine doses have been given out in America. The bad news is that there's no cure for stupid. So basically he goes on to say that all these, you know, there's about 25% of the country that are either in refusal. I mean, I still wonder about their numbers. Their numbers seem kind of suspect when it comes to those who have actually received it. Now, let's just say we take it at face value that for many, uh, for many thinkers should let you know that the country is in dire straits where you have a lot of people that are willing to sacrifice their freedom uh, in hopes that if they go ahead and they go through, that if they go through taking this, that everything is going to go back to normal and that they're going to have their lives back. Now, of course, this um, news anchor for CNN talks about how individuals that you know are, are basically stupid for not wanting to receive this medication, this jab that is basically experimental. It's it's 100% considered experimental because the only way that they're able to push uh, for this uh, jab to be pushed out to the public is if there are no other forms of medication that are available. And so that's kind of why in the very beginning where you had this push for things like hydroxychloroquine where or ivermectin and a lot of these other medications that were typically used. And then any any person of the medical community that came out and said, well, why don't we try this? Or why don't we try this? And they were like, just bar that person. That guy is, uh, you know, where do you get his license from? Cracker Jack box? And you get this sort of pushback. Now, the reason that it always alarmed me, you know, being an older, being an older gentleman, I am 42 now. Right. And so I had grown up in a church that was very much like that, where you weren't allowed to read, you know, sort of outside information. And if you started asking, you know, certain questions, people will have kind of looked at you sideways and were wondering, you know, were you partaking in some of this, uh, what they refer to as apostate literature? And of course, you had this sort of shaming language and fear tactics that we don't want to go that way because those individuals, you know, they they left what we consider to be the accurate way to serve God, etc. And if you kept on pushing, well, maybe you were someone that we needed to keep an eye on because you were pushing information and asking certain questions that you shouldn't be. And of course, when individuals couldn't answer those questions via, you know, logic and reason, and at the very least through the scriptures, people just basically said, you know, just wait and see. Now, of course, when it comes to your health, a wait and see attitude is what many, many times when people come to the hospital, doctors will even, you know, doctors may wait and see. They might favor, some doctors might favor not going through surgery or not giving people medication because these things typically have a side effect. And sometimes the body just kind of resolves the issues that brought you into the hospital on their own. With minor, with minor adjustments, maybe someone needs fluid, maybe you need a little bit of some emergency medication and then we'll kind of wait and see how the body reacts to see if you come back to homeostasis but not when it comes to things like this they view kind of a, they view you as an idiot or you're stupid what, what do you mean you don't want to take this medication that is experimental because they're because it was re released and rushed uh, to the public and of course there are no long-term studies about the side effects and you're like well okay let me think about this is it you know if something goes wrong right if, if I, I have an event can I, can I sue? Like, is, is there some sort of a protection? And they're like, no, you can't, you can't sue. You can't sue the hospital. You can't sue the doctor. You can't sue the manufacturer. You can't sue the drug rep. You can't sue anybody. And so you're like, oh, what do you want? That's the, I, I, you start to want to start asking a few more questions and you're like, well, does it work? And they're like, well, we're not sure. Uh, because there's some people that who have taken it and they've still come up with, the, they still come up getting sick anyway. And they're like, well, are there any side effects? And they're like, yeah, you might get a blood clot. There'd be people that have died, but it's not related to jab, right? In every circumstance, they were like, oh, it has nothing to do with the jab. They'll try to find and, you know, whatever sort of excuse. And there ain't nobody out there that, that there's no doctor, there's no organization, there's no country for that matter that is going to come out and say, well, this is without a doubt what caused you to have a stroke or blood clot, etc." Even though there's been numerous cases, they've had to take some of these medications uh, and I use that word loosely off of the market. And then they quickly come back on the market and they're like, our internal studies find that there was absolutely nothing related to 
uh, related to the jab that cause you to have this stroke or paralysis, etc. And of course, they view you as an idiot when you become a skeptic, and you're like, maybe I'm gonna wait. Maybe I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bide my time. I want to see how how it how it affects you. And of course, they view they say, well, you can't do that. If you plan on you want to travel, if you want to go back to work, if you want to open your business, well, you can't. And you're like, so you're forcing me. And they're like, oh, we're not forcing you. You're 100 percent within your right to choose. But if you choose not to, well, you can't leave your house. And you're just like, yeah, like, like what? Like why are you pressing me so hard? to take this is it just because you want to get open i mean the numbers are dropping the hospitalizations like what hospitalizations cases have plummeted to the to the lowest they've been so it's like okay if that's the case well why don't we just sit back and relax and let's see what happens later on they're like no we can't do it you got to take it you got to take it you got to take it now right you want you got to save grandma they come up with this narrative and of course when you look in other places for example like in india right it says uh, global cases it weekly record despite everybody getting it and it's like you sit there and you scratch your head and you're just like well wait a minute right every everybody everybody's taking it why are we seeing off the chart uh why are we seeing off the chart cases that, that don't make no sense but now you're telling me that i've got it or all these people i got it still seeing they're like yeah it's because of the variants and so then basically what you're telling me is that, that it doesn't protect you against the variant and then I can still get sick. And they're just like, oh shit, we didn't plan for him to ask that question. Cut. And that's basically what happens, you know, in, in the TV, in the mainstream media. When you start when you start asking a few too many questions and people start looking at you, you must be a Trumper. You're a Republican, aren't you? I knew it. And it's just like, yeah, I'm sorry uh, if I started using clear logic and my ability to reason to start asking questions and if that offends you you're like i'm sorry and again similarly there's a new study that just came out it says more than one third of the people who have received the jab it says have side effects and it says the reaction this is more than likely if you've had if, if you've had the virus so for those who they say have had the virus are actually having adverse effects from actually taking the medication of course that when you take all that into consideration any reasonable person would want to ask questions like for example is it you know what is the chances of me at my current age I, I, what what are the likelihood of me of having an adverse effect from the actual virus itself and they're like uh well it's 99 percent for most people who are under 60 but you could still kill some old people and even though for the older people it's like 95 point something percent but still it's like one person is one too many and it's like but what about those who died as a result of taking the jab is one one too many for them what about those who ended up with a stroke there's been numerous cases of individuals for women who have been having menstruation problems even bleeding more profusely than normal like you non-stop you hear about blood clots which of course can lead to stroke or for a person losing losing a limb you know you could have a heart attack as a result of ischemia to the heart you could have a stroke if the clot happens to be uh in the brain right so wherever that clot is it basically cuts off blood circulation and if that goes on for too long you can have adverse effects right it's called cell death right when your cells don't get enough oxygen because not enough blood flow is flowing to that particular part of the body whether it's your stuff whether it's your intestines it could be a foot it could be a hand and it becomes more detrimental if it's someplace like for example in a lung uh, you, or it's a PE, right? It's a pulmonary embolism, or the person has it in the brain, or if they have it in the heart. And so these are actually adverse side effects that can cause individuals to lose their life or to have lifelong, um, you know, to be diminished in some way, shape, or form. They could be hurt, long term effects. Not to mention to those who have just like got the jab and they found them the next day and they were dead. And they were just like, there is absolutely no reason, there's no reason to think it was the jab. And I was just like, well, what did they do different? Well, yesterday they got the jab and they died. There's some people that have literally died within hours of receiving the jab. And some there was like that, that guy at the Javits Center here in New York. He went home two hours later and they found and they were just like, oh, it must have been the tuna sandwich that he had. It must have been bad. You know, some some sort of ridiculousness. And everything that's been going on lately reminded me of this movie. I actually had to re-watch it. I've talked to people about this. If you haven't had the opportunity. You can, whether you want to download it, I'm not saying you should download it, but if you can find it in some way, shape, or form, it, it's this movie that aired, I think it was back in the 80s or in the 90s, and it's called They Live with Roddy Roddy Piper, and it and it, it was back then, people were much more aware of propaganda, and 
and how propaganda works and how sometimes what you what appears to be normal what you're going through your you know the motions every day where there's propaganda that is constantly bombarding you it was a very good movie that talked in-depthly about it where you know roddy roddy piper he gets these sun, um sunglasses that basically show what's really going on so you'd see these billboards and they would actually have some sort of an advertising but once he put on the glasses you saw things like consume obey uh, conform etc and this is basically what you have right now with stuff like this but this stuff is just like overt in your face on a daily basis with you know minorities everybody on twitter talking about i got it and i feel amazing and it's almost like it's a cult and that's why in the very beginning especially what we see nowadays it's what kind of put the antennas up to to stop and think and pay attention to what was going on and not even many of my colleagues i've, I've the past couple of hospitals that i've worked at and i asked people they're like hey did you get it? and they're just like and i'm like why and they're just like mm-mm it's just like you can tell me it's like i know what's going on it's like i'm not like in the no i'm not gonna narc on you on something and they're just like yeah i'm just like, i ain't taking it why would i take it i'm young I'm, or or they're like i know what's going on in the hospital setting i know about you know the high uh, ct values that they were using i know the type of patients that were coming through that they were supposedly you know infected but this person died a heart failure this person had a heart attack you know this person was a gunshot victim but on the on the death cert was it you know was it is it tell a told a different story by comparison to those who actually worked in the hospital and so typically the only ones that you'll see on tv are those ones you'll get like these hysterical nurses that are just like you know like you should be ashamed of yourself you're killing grandma and you see these ridiculous people on tv and you're led to believe that that is the norm and that if you're not thinking like this gentleman is referring to well then you're an idiot right and there's no cure for stupidity as he says and i would be like well what's more stupid imagining that there have been no uh n nothing criminally going on i mean even when you talk about within the stock market right even when you talk about within the stock market and you look at companies for example like moderna they're like who the hell is moderna like where did this company come out of and then you start to do a little bit of research and then you're like oh this was something that was pushed by bill gates this was a, a 14 dollars stock it was a 14 18 dollar stock and it came out of nowhere now it's like a 200 dollar stock how did that happen and then you see you start to read information about oh the ceo on the day that the vax came out where they were just dumping stock same thing with pfizer right they knew with pfizer but then you look at companies like pfizer and you're like why, why isn't pfizer moving right johnson and johnson came out with their own thing johnson and johnson i don't see no movement in the stock like what's going on like i'm an i'm an investor i've been investing for 22 years right you look at other for astrazeneca and i'm like I don't, I don't see nothing going on here all these companies they got their own stuff but why don't i see the kind of movement like i see here when you're an investor you know this kind of raises questions and if you have any sort of a medical background you start to notice things and you start to put things together and you're like hmm but they call you stupid because you don't believe the narrative you have the problem is is that you have too much information and you have too much perspective that's the problem for a lot of people who that they, who can't be fooled right just like just like in they live right once once he once he realized what was going on it was like eyes wide open and then for a lot of americans I mean, a lot of, there are a lot of them that have their their eyes shut but there are plenty of them that have their eyes wide open and they know what's going on the problem is is that if this is true unfortunately many of us might be outnumbered and might be pressured physically financially emotionally to to go ahead and, and to get this there's even been calls for like spiritual like the, the church leaders and they're like yo get your congregation involved etc and i'm just like wow propaganda even in the church and same thing happened during the time of Hitler. Shouldn't be surprised. There were plenty of people. There were plenty of ministers and plenty of church officials and plenty of uh, pastors, etc. Whatever they referred to them back then, that they were just like, "Oh, hail Hitler!" And like, "You like, what about Jesus?" And they were like, "Oh, Jesus would vote for Hitler too." And you just like, "What?" And then these are the times that we live in. It's why ever more so that individuals should be using their brains and critically thinking about what's going on. But not everything is as they say, of course, right? And of course, just like the Bible says, the Bible says that the foolish person is the person who believes everything that they hear, right? The book of Proverbs talks about that. It says the foolish person believes in everything that is said. 
But it says that the, 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 the discreet one, he sees the calamity and he proceeds to conceal himself. He perceives, he can see what's going on. He sees the danger, right? And then he's like, you know what? Not, not me. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be one of those people that get, that get themselves caught up and they conceal themselves, right? Whether it's changing their jobs, creating their own business, uh, you know, moving to a different country that doesn't have these sort of, I mean, people are out here not paying their rent and government's just giving out money. There was this other article. This, this video is going to be a little bit longer than I wanted, but I'm basically going to put both of these videos into one. And so what a lot of people and a lot of businesses are experiencing as a result of, you know, this is all basically interconnected, right? And so you have a lot of these individuals. This is Manhattan restaurants. This is jobs. Uh, go begging. It says, it says, it says uh, Manhattan restaurant jobs. It says, go begging. It says, hobbling industry come back. It says, labor crunches is uh, crimping businesses at, uh, just as in New York starts to bounce back after a brutal year. And it's because they can't find people to work, right? There was, um, I think it was that McDonald's that they were paying people to come in for an interview because nobody wants to work. And why would you when the government is paying you to stay home, right? The government is in essence competing with business owners and they're keeping people home. And this is in essence uh, what they want many Americans to get used to that they're, you know, a stimmy check is on the way. Don't worry about it. You even had Joe Biden uh, uh, post another video talking about this. <laughs> Joe Biden was like, you know, since when do you have to choose between a job and a paycheck? And it's like, what? But this is what they imagine, what they want people to live. And just like the Bible says, right, a little more folding of the hands, right? And poverty will be set upon you. And this is basically what, where the government is moving towards. They're getting a lot of these individuals who used to work these sort of jobs. And the government is like, just don't worry about it. We'll pay you to stay home. People imagine that this is going to go on indefinitely. And, and literally, literally, the government is teaching people how to be slaves, right? <laughs> and it's just like people just don't even people just don't even see it. And of course they're, you know, they're they're borrowing all of this money. And so instead of them saying, "Hey, you know, go back to work. We want we want you to create businesses. We want you to create jobs." And they're like, "Oh, you don't have to work. Don't worry about it. We'll send you a check." And I'm and you're just like, "What?" And this is anti-Christian, right? The Bible was completely against this, as the Apostle Paul said. He said, he straightforwardly said, he said, he who does not work does not eat, right? And so even if you're a Christian, this should be completely against what you stand for. The idea that the government is going to sit here and dole out paper money, and you think that there's going to be no ramifications for what's going on. But this is just basically, to me, when I see this, this is just a, it's just a litmus test of the mentality of the country to see how spiritually sick many of these individuals are. They don't realize what's going on. They're blind to everything that the government is doing. And you get this sort of propaganda daily, where wherever you go on the bus and on the train at your job, did you get, did you get your jab, right? Everything go back to normal. Just make sure you keep on wearing your mask. And this is like, what? And you even see like the CDC even trying to start to like, well, let's, let's negotiate. Maybe if we kind of like show some sort of reasonableness and they're like, well, if you got it, if the other person got it, well, then now you can take your mask off outside. And it's just like, bro. And it just goes to show, it just goes to show mentally and spiritually where the nation is. And the collapse is going to be so bad. And many people are just really not going to be ready for what comes next. Once this, and this is just basically a scene to play, right? It's just basically, uh, this is act two, right? This is basically act two of the whole show, right? And so once this scene changes, many Americans will not be ready for the next. They will be shocked and surprised that though, that they, you know, the thoughts of them going back to normal and they, re and they recognize by, by, that the reality of what they thought was going to happen doesn't. And then they see the, the turn from their politicians of what really is going on. Many will be shocked. And by then, it will unfortunately be too late.